Setting up payments in a web application can be complicated, but not with Stripe and SvelteKit. I am Nev, I'm a dev, and today I want to show you how I set up Stripe in a modern web application built in SvelteKit. Yeah, we're going to cover everything today, how to uh, do a yeah kind of user management thing in, in SvelteKit, and I'm going to show it to you with my latest project which is Zenith. And we have our project running here, so we can run bundev and we should be up and running. Um, for those who don't know, this is my little app I've been building in the last couple of uh, like two months or something like that. And we have a pricing thing, uh, which is $20. I think this is pretty reasonable because you need to pay $20 once and then you basically have the app for your whole lifetime. And I'm going to select my secondary account for this video because this account isn't paid. Yeah, as you can see, we are not paid. This is basically kind of not the view, but yeah, this is the view when you're first logged in and you have like, you just created your account, right? So right now we got our three free uh, remaining uh, queries. So if we go ahead and type in dinner with Lucia, which is of course the auth library I'm using for this app, it will automatically, yeah, I think you know that, right? Because you've probably seen my other videos about this application. And as you can see, we got two more, um, say hi to dad i don't know also buy groceries and now it says you have used all of your free queries purchase the product to continue we get redirected to this billing page here on the account and if we click on purchase we will get redirected to a stripe checkout page so let's actually go ahead and cover how we actually set this up and yeah to start with we need a little stripe file here where we just input the uh, stripe key which we have in our environment variables in our env and we go ahead and do const stripe is new stripe instance with the ip api version of 240410 um which is basically date when i created that i guess so we initialize this uh little stripe thing right here then we actually go into our stripe api route and we create this session handler or basically we have a request handler this should probably be post i don't know in the comments i love youtube so please comment if this should be get or post because i'm not sure so first we check for a user because if the user isn't there um this is a little util if the user is there we redirect them and if the user is not uh, verified um we send them to the email verification step because I don't want unverified emails in my Stripe. So this is why I do that. Then we initialize this session. So we do await stripe .checkout And then we give it this object with the config. So we pass in some line items, um, which are basically the checkout items we get. And we have this little price ID. We import it from our environment variables. In an e-commerce store, this of course would look a bit different, but I can just hard code the product in here since it is only one product on one quantity and I can change your price ID in my environment variables. So then we have customer email is user.email, we allow promotion codes and the mode is payment. I think there are some other modes, um, yeah, payment setup or subscription, but in our case it's just a payment and we want to create an invoice and we want to create a customer. Two things that you need to pass in as well is the success URL and the cancel URL. So what are these? So I think it's pretty self-explanatory, but if your checkout session completes, then you get redirected to the success URL. And if you cancel it, you get to the, you get redirected to the cancel URL. And here you can do even crazy shenanigans and cool stuff with checkout session ID. Yeah, we play with, around with these URL params and Stripe will automatically know, okay, we need to pass in the checkout session ID right here. Yeah, so this is that. Um, one important thing we also need to set up is webhooks. I'm going to tell you what webhooks are right now, but I'm going to explain a little bit later. So basically we expose this post uh, request handler uh, on Stripe, on API slash Stripe slash webhook. And what a webhook essentially is, is that when we have Stripe and their API sends back things to us. 
So what we're doing here is actually sending things to the Stripe API or via the Stripe API to the Stripe backend. But this is actually the other way. So um, when we have a checkout session completed, they actually send us a thing back, you know? So um, yeah, this is basically what we have here. We can check for this event type, which is checkout session completed, and then we can retrieve the event .data .object .id, which we basically get from this checkout session event. And we just do this and create a new user and we create a new order in our orders table. So yeah, let me actually show this to you, but we need to do one thing first. We need to go ahead and set up a Stripe webhook. So if you are in local development, you just go ahead and take this command line. I'm going to show it to you how it works in production, but this is how it works in development. What we're basically doing here is we call Stripe and then listen, which is the command for listening to events. And we want to forward this event to our URL, which in this case is not true. Uh, it's not true. For Svelkit is 5173 slash and in our case it's slash api slash stripe slash webhook not webhooks but webhook this is super important because if you don't do that it won't work so we can do that and it is up and running so now we are set and we can go ahead and purchase this and yeah we are already here we can go ahead and do our card information. We are in test mode right now, so I'm gonna use the uh, Stripe test uh, credit card. It doesn't really matter what you put in here. And then, yeah, you just go ahead and click pay. And because it's a correct credit card, we actually get redirected here. And we go to this little success URL. As you can see, we get the correct URL parents, which is ID is CS test something. And we can also view our invoice right here. And now we have also everything in here. Um, we are paid. Yes, see billing. We can do all of that. Oh, I need to remove this banner if we are authenticated. So let's actually, yeah, I will do that later. Um, but yeah, I think you can kind of see what this is. So I think the most complicated thing and which is not really explained well enough is this webhook, basically. Um, because, yeah, I don't know. It, it didn't really, I didn't really know what to do um, at first. So I was like, okay, well, what do we really need? What do we really um Need to do here because we get this node.js thing in the documentation but for frameworks we don't really get any instructions so i really had to um try to figure that out myself make sure webhook secret uh you need to actually generate this in your um stripe dashboard i think and yeah when you have done that um everything works well so why do we actually want to receive this webhook because um Actually, we want to also update our users table um, because we want like a way to tell if a user has actually been checking out and then we actually go ahead and um, insert into the database because you don't want to do that manually, you know. So now let me actually show you how to set this up in prod. So if we go to Stripe, so now we are in test mode and now we are in production mode and if we are in production mode, we want to go to the developers tab and then to webhooks. And then we want to, yeah, we already did this here. Uh, we, of course, have nothing because no, no one ever <laughs> checked out, I guess. Um, yeah, we can have these local listeners, which we have here with our Stripe webhook secret. But if we want to end, if we want to add an endpoint right here, this is actually what we would use in production. So. I don't know, we would have something like um, your domain.com slash API slash stripe slash webhooks. And yeah, then we go ahead and do listen to events on your account. And yup, that is true. Um, select events to listen to. And then we have all of these cool events we can actually listen to. Um, yeah, pretty nice, right? So this is basically how we set up this. Um, Make sure that this is checkout the session done completed so that this is the same as we are retrieving from here. 
um but yeah then you're basically good to go right um so yeah this is how to set up these stripe webhooks another use case for these webhooks could be that i would implement like an email confirmation um which is sent to the customer which i could do but uh, maybe i will do that in the future but right now i don't have really plans to do that because yeah, you basically get um, everything directly, right? And yeah, so that was basically it. I think setting up Stripe in your web application is not really difficult. Like I said, the webhooks were definitely the most complicated things to set up because I didn't really understand it at first. But I hope I could help you out a bit with this video. And if so, I would appreciate it if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. Um, and if you hit the notification bell, you won't miss out any future videos so yeah that was it from my side i hope you liked it and we will see us in the next video